So today we are with David Dowd and we're going to talk about um, Hospice Awareness Month for November. Yes. And I can't remember ever doing this topic so it's going to be interesting and fascinating and like I was telling you I think that most people um, know nothing about it until boom all of a sudden you're you're there you're in it and so I'm kind of interested to talk to you to to get information so I'm going to go ahead and get started if you would uh, just uh, first of all tell us a little bit about your company and then I want you to go into what hospice is, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, well, um, you know, like I said, you know, my name is David Dowd, and and um, I'm the owner of a Leave Care Hospice. Mm -hmm. um, we came up with that name because really in hospice, this is exactly what we do. We alleviate pain, we alleviate discomfort, we alleviate concerns. Maybe they're spiritual concerns. Maybe they're burial arrangement concerns. Maybe they can run the gamut. Um, so a leave care hospice. Uh, we've been in business since 2017. Mm -hmm. We're located right here in downtown historic Mansfield, um, right off of Maine and Broad. And uh, we're just here to be a wonderful resource for the community. Okay. And so tell us what hospice care is. Yeah. So what you just said a minute ago, <laughs> um, when you let in, um, not really knowing what it was, mm -hmm. that's just so common. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lori, it's, it's, it's really the most prevalent kind of response that we get when we start to talk to families because I think that really, you know, Medicare got a lot of things right in that it's when you're talking about Medicare, it's 100% covered. There are no co-pays. The, the basic definition of hospice is, is really criteria based. Okay. So you do have to have somebody that has a terminal diagnosis and that a physician feels is likely to have six months or less to live if they don't seek aggressive treatment. Okay, and I understand there's uh, four levels of hospice? Yeah, yeah, what there are four that? different types of, of hospice care. So one is routine care, which is exactly what you might think. So maybe we have somebody um, that requires one visit a week, two visits a week, all of those visitations or visits are determined by the plan of care from the interdisciplinary team, and we can talk about that in a bit. Um, so hospice is delivered wherever a patient calls home. That could be an assisted living facility, a nursing home, it could be your home, your apartment, um, your daughter or son's home. Is that, is that for any level? Of hospice, or is it just in level one? Um, well, it's it's really for two of them. Okay. So, and I don't want to mislead anybody into thinking that the levels are progressive. Okay. So there's routine care. Uh -huh. There is respite care, and respite care would be when a caregiver um, just really needs a break. The primary okay. caregiver, or there's a reason that they cannot be there to take care of their loved one. Right. So we could set up respite care at a local facility mm -hmm. where they would take care of the patient. Hospice covers that cost, um, and that can be for up to four midnights. So mm -hmm. five days, four midnights, and then they would need to return home. So it gives you some time to be able to get okay. away. Now, anything in addition to that, hospice couldn't cover. So okay. if you needed to be away on a vacation or something for seven days, hospice covers it those first four nights, and then the uh, the family would need to cover the rest. Um, that's respite care. There is inpatient care, so that would be in the setting of uh, like a hospital, mm -hmm. um, where you can have hospice care delivered inpatient. And uh, the other level. That's it. Hang on, that's interesting. Yeah. So they're in a hospital. Yes. And then they would receive hospice care. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, so what's the? How does that work? So that's, if you're in a hospital, or uh, if you're in a sometimes they're referred to as a hospice house those yeah. could be considered inpatient um, um, visits okay. or, or stays and that's where you've you've chosen um, comfort over aggressive treatment okay. so maybe you know you don't want to be in the hospital with all of the tubes and life support right. and those types of things or aggressive medications um, you're just looking for comfort uh, but you're still in the hospital so that okay. would be general inpatient or inpatient care and then that last level, or that other level, I should say, mm -hmm. is is continuous care. Mm -hmm. But you might you might think of it as crisis care, mm -hmm. and really that's for uncontrollable symptom management. Um, that could be for something like um, uncontrolled nausea, mm -hmm. and maybe we need to have somebody that's uh, a 
a nurse from our team come and sit at the bedside mm -hmm. up to 24 hours a day um, continuously. Okay. They work in 12 hour shifts um, and, and uh, they can provide that care that maybe um, a primary caregiver that's not clinical would just feel uncomfortable um, right. handling. And then it can also be for, and it's most often used for pain management really close to the end of life. You mentioned um, some myths. So throw some of them at me. What are some of the most common myths that you yeah, want to share? Yeah, um, one that pops to, to mind immediately mm -hmm. is that hospice is, is giving up. Yeah. And, it, and it's really not. Hospice is, is truly about living life to the fullest with whatever time you have left. Mm -hmm. um, studies will even show, or studies show, mm -hmm. that um, people that do choose hospice mm -hmm. and that comfort care rather than aggressive treatment um, actually end up living longer. Yeah. Surprising, right? Well, I guess it's your mental state is probably better, right? Yeah. If you're not miserable. <laughs> yeah, and you've got a lot of care. You've got yeah. more eyes on you. You've got uh, more comforting care. They're keeping yeah. the keeping you away from um, feeling pain and uncomfortable. So yeah, yeah, that could be part of it. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, another myth would be um, that you don't have the option to choose which hospice company you want. You think that your physician is going to tell you exactly which hospice. Um, and that's just not true. It's mm -hmm. always patient choice. So really everything in hospice is centered around the choice of the family and the patient. Okay. Um, another myth talking about you know more and more benefit periods is, um, is that hospice is only for the last couple of days or a couple of weeks of life. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, we've said it a couple of times, you have a diagnosis of six months or less, um, then you could be eligible for the benefit of hospice. And um, that's not limited to six months either. Often so, what we see is we're able to develop a closer relationship with the patient over time and the family mm -hmm. so that when more difficult decisions do need to be made, uh, there's already, already that trust that's built into the team. Um, and we're able to provide so much more when we have more time with the patients. Uh, one of the biggest feedback um, comments that any hospice company gets from the families when we survey them after, after um, patients are no longer on our services is that they just wish they had known about hospice sooner. You yeah. know, that's the most common. It's, it's just amazing how much we just don't know. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I've said that before in the beginning. Um, you don't know anything about it until you need it. So, right. um, one of the uh, questions that I wanted to ask you um, as you're, you know, you, you go into the program, what, what's the process that you take a client through? Mm -hmm. How do you um, work with that family? What are some of the things that you do? And maybe that are unique to a leave care. Yeah, it's such a great question. Um, so we would get that referral. Let's just say that we've decided to admit the patient. So the, the nurse is there visiting and assessing the patient. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten all the legal documentation signed. It's roughly you know, 10 to 12 signatures on some uh, very easy to read um, documents. Okay. So that gets done, we do the assessment, we um, admit the patient, and then we would assess, or the, the nurse would assess what supplies, what medications are needed. They would do a full assessment of the medications that the patient is on mm -hmm. um, and decide whether all of those need to continue or some of them might not continue, and then have a discussion with the patient or the family um, about why they might not need those medications any longer at this point. Okay. Um, and then add medications that, that we need to, to have added. Of course, everything that I'm talking about has to have a doctor's order. So if you right. hear me today talking about medications or supplies, all of that. Here's the fine print. The nurse, the nurse <laughs> is recommended, yeah. and then the physicians make the decision right. and, and provide the, the, the order for right. that. So, yeah, the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the disclaimer. That's right. Run it across the bottom of the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we provide things as needed, mm -hmm. like a hospital bed that's mm -hmm. electric, you know, exactly right. like you would see in a, in a hospital or very mm -hmm. similar, that can make it more comfortable for the mm -hmm. patient. Different types of mattresses um, that can help with um, the reduction of the chance for um, bed sores, mm -hmm. those types of things. So maybe it's a high airflow mattress. Okay. Uh, they're all different types of things. Oxygen, 
um, all of your medication. So everything that is associated with the primary diagnosis, the mm -hmm. hospice diagnosis, and comorbidities, and comfort is covered by the hospice benefit. Yeah. So that can include things like incontinence supplies, diapers, pull-ups, wipes, um, even if you're having an upset stomach mm -hmm. and you need something like Tums, that's something that we would provide okay. um, along with all of the medications. So it's kind of like it's it really is it's care not only for the patient but for that family yeah. and it's kind of like you're there to hold their hand mm -hmm. all of their hands yes. through the entire process right. from beginning to end. Yeah. So that here's my next question. What makes someone go into this line of work? What makes you go well, into this yeah, line what's, of work? What's the Gosh, I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Uh, I just can't imagine. Yeah. Well, I'm really lucky because I'm in a position where I sit on one side of a desk and get to interview a lot of people that are looking to come to possibly join our team to help us continue to build something wonderful here. Right. And um, the stories that I hear, mm -hmm. I would say that there is such a high percentage of people that share a very personal story um, about an experience wow. with hospice yeah. that made them decide to get into hospice specifically. Really? Yeah, almost everybody, yeah, including me. Really? Yeah, yes. So yes. tell me yours. Well, um, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, my grandfather passed away um, about 10 years ago in a nursing home here in Mansfield. Yeah. And um, I saw him before he had passed away, and I went in and you know, I was, uh, I didn't know what to expect, but my mom had told me that the time was drawing near and we didn't really have, we didn't have hospice involved. I wasn't familiar with it. She wasn't familiar with it. And, um, I saw him, I went and I sang old church hymns to him, uh, that he used to sing to me when I was a little boy. And I've told you before, I'm a terrible singer. So <laughs> that probably frustrated him. But, um, when I left after being there for, uh, for quite some time and nobody had come in and checked on him. Um, I closed the door, I left and, and he had passed away later um, that day. And like, there's, there's just no doubt in my mind that he passed away alone. Um, and that just shouldn't happen. You know, not in the United States of America, yeah. not here, not, he was a veteran as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a, a fantastic veterans program as well that focuses on understanding veterans on yeah, a you deeper told me level. something about that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Is that something specific to your organization? It's or? not specific. Okay. So not all hospices join the We Honor Veterans Program, right. but that's run through the VA, and we have um, applied for that, and, mm -hmm. and you have to earn you have to earn different levels. Um, so mm -hmm. as you educate your team and you become more and more familiar with what veterans need from us, um, you're able to treat the, these you know, American heroes uh, the way right. that they should be treated. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cool. back to my grandfather, it's just kind of a not on my watch sort of thing at this point. Yeah. You know, we want everybody to have that, you know, very personal um, time in their life be as comfortable as mm -hmm. possible. That's interesting. Not on my watch. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to leave it on that because <laughs> I like that. Not on my watch. Yeah. Thanks. That's awesome.